All right, I believe this means we are live. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tech fans of all shapes and sorts and sizes and persuasions, this is not a podcast. <laughs> That's my spiel. I'm so used to using this setup to jump into a podcast that I just kind of I just kind of ran with it. I just let it go. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, please let me know. I, I've tried to adjust the levels. I can't hear what's coming back. So I'd like to leave the music on. Uh, having the sort of royalty-free lo-fi channel is kind of my jam. So, so please let me know if uh, levels are funky or if you're having a harder time hearing me or if a song is just really, really terrible and we can try and skip it. Um, thank you all so much for, for jumping in. I am critically excited. Last night, uh, TK and I did, a, did a, another episode of Best of Our Week, a shameless plug for the Best of Our Week podcast because TK is my brother from another mother and that's our, our chance to just catch up with each other and, and kind of nerd out for a bit. But um, we, we had an extended conversation and it's something that I've been trying to talk about a bit more has been you know, all the ways that we can get more out of our phones. I just did another video for reviews.org. And when the folks at Qualcomm reached out just saying, we've got this Motorola partnership. We're wondering if you'd be interested in just taking the phone for a spin. This is, uh, I, I have to put up the disclosure that this phone um, and what, what's in the big box here was sent by Motorola. They have had no editorial influence over how I'm going to be presenting my reviews or my videos or even just this unboxing. But TK and I were talking last night about how um, we're, we're a little concerned about competition, right? We wanna see companies really rising to the occasion, making the best products that they can. And then we as techies, we're trying to find those ways to tell stories where people can get more out of the money that they spend on these products. And that might be desktop modes, that might be advanced productivity features. It could just be, do you, do you, do you want a phone with a stylus in it? You know, we, we wanna move beyond just phones are for basic social media consumption. So I am ridiculously excited. This is the first premium moto I've been able to play with since, uh, since I left Pocket now. So the last premium moto that I got to use was it had moto mods on it <laughs> so that's how far back i'm going um so so huge huge uh shout out huge thank you to the qualcomm insiders team and the motorola us team for uh throwing together this partnership and for including me on it because you know i'm in one of those sort of in between channel sizes i know i'm not the biggest player out there even though i've been around for a while but you know, I'm also not the smallest, so it's not the same kind of grassroots enthusiast sort of conversation. You're getting the old cranky guy who likes to wag his fist at tech reviewers to get off his lawn. So um, it's it, it it's fun. It is what it is. Um, from Charles Monroe, last Moto Edge I had the chip would overheat and mess up the screen. I hope yours does better. This is definitely one of the conversations I think our entire industry needs to be taking more seriously as we've been watching these products evolve over the last couple of years. So however I go about using this Moto Edge, not only a direct pipeline to Motorola, I'm really hoping to have some frank conversations with Qualcomm engineers, because I feel like something might just be getting lost from, you know, ARM, you know, making these reference design uh, cores, then Qualcomm is putting them together. And, and for this generation of chip, what we're playing with right now, Samsung is doing the fabrication, and then those parts are going to manufacturers, and the manufacturers have certain criteria that they're trying to accomplish, and they have their own components to deal with. And it feels like somewhere along that chain, we're not doing the best job we could of really communicating what's the best consumer experience. I'm really hoping, like for example, I'm gonna be doing a first impressions shot video, but it's all gonna be crowdsourced. So I, I asked yesterday and I've got a whole series of tweets. I'm literally just gonna be replying to the tweets on how to use this phone. But I'm totally getting ahead of myself here. Um, I'm not caffeinated enough or I'm too caffeinated. I haven't figured out which yet. <laughs> I just wanna see what's in the box. I've literally only cut the tape on the box. This box is too big for just a phone. I'm, I'm not usually the, whoa, unboxing wacky thumbnail guy. Ugh. You know, that's not me. But they said they were sending a phone. 
<laughs> I really hope this isn't just a phone, <laughs> or else I'm gonna have to have a conversation with um, with Qualcomm uh, about packaging waste. You know, we're very concerned about saving the environment by removing chargers from the box, right? <laughs> so I, I hope this doesn't bork the whole stream. Um, let's let's see if, if if I can pull this off properly. And do we have B cam? We do have B cam. So this is my adorable, ridiculously rickety um, IKEA desk. And oh, I just noticed my framing. You all out there in TV viewing land will get to see my unclothed kneecaps. So I hope that doesn't send anyone into a case of the Victorian vapors. If you're too hysterical by this amount of skin and flesh in your tech coverage, I do apologize. <laughs> Dude, this is so wide. The, the box is too big for my little I, I, Ikea desk. I know, Gormlord, I'm totally failing to get to the point. What's in the box? <laughs> okay, so uh, let's go ahead and crack this open here. Oh, TK Bay. I'm sorry, I just got to shout this out. My buddy, TK. Uh, let's see. Oh, are you ready for it, Juan? <laughs> get it? It's a, it's a desktop mode pun. It's pretty much the best one. <laughs> oh, I have the box upside down. So first of all, it would help if I got this. Ah, crack that open there. And there definitely seems to be, um, a, oh, this is a full backpack. Is this a full backpack? Oh, this is really nice. It feels like one of those kind of Tyvek style recycled material bags. Um, it's got like a little magnetic clasp. Yeah, that's pretty nice. This is cute. Actually, you know what? I bet Lex would really like this. This is kind of like the perfect size for her to have just like her own little sort of fun, not school backpack. But um, I'm gonna just very carefully get all of this packing stuff out of the way. We can drop that. Oh, and I might not have the right autofocus set on this camera. So I'm gonna switch that right now too. Perfect. So yeah, look at this, nice and cute. And there's stuff inside of it. And it's got those like, I think this is the faux leather because it doesn't feel, well, maybe, I don't know. I'm not a material science expert kind of person, but big, you know, clamps. Got the, the, the robot clamps. I can't remember, was the name of the robot in Futurama clamps? I think it was clamps. So let me zoom in just a bit. Again, anyone who was uh, shocked by my by my unclothed and naked kneecaps will will no longer have to be quite so upset. We'll open this up here. Here's something in plastic. Oh, the 15 watt turbo power. Okay, so we got a little Motorola wireless charger. That's that's pretty handy. And I've got paperwork. Um, let's see, they, they included a little Google Play gift card so I can get some apps and movies and things going on. But I probably shouldn't show off all that paperwork directly on camera. Let me just kind of tuck that oh, 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 to the side right there. Then there's, what is this guy? Oh, okay, I've been wanting to play with these. These are the Snapdragon Sound earbuds. Now TK has been raving about these. Um, so I, I finally get to take a listen to these. I, I helped them do the launch for Snapdragon Sound, the Snapdragon Sound initiative, and I, I've i never been able to play with these earbuds. So now I'm finally gonna get caught up and uh, up to speed on those. So that'll be pretty fun. And then we have the Motorola Edge Plus 5G. And let's see, I don't know if there's any other extra badging or branding on this, but let me move this bag out of the way. We can start cracking into this phone. Um, get that there. So, I, you know, Billy, Billy McMorris, I'm not, I, I don't mean Bender, Bender bends things, but there's the Mafia robot from Futurama, and I think his name is Clamps. He's got the Clamps, and I remember he had that, like, showdown um, with Claws, with Zoidberg, and I can't remember what his name is. I'm, I'm just really not um, living up to my Futurama fandom. And the, the show's coming back, so I'm gonna have to binge the entire series. And see, I like, see, look, TK really, really loves the MW08, these earbuds right here. 
I'm, I'm, I'm stoked. Uh, again, it's anything we can do to kind of treat our ears a little kinder. So um, let me pop this open here and we can lift this out and I'll set that to the side. That's really pretty. And then look, look at how thick this box is. So if this box is this thick, maybe inside we'll get a charger. Hey, that's pretty refreshing. Nice, cute little charger there. Um, and, uh, and the USB cable. So, you know, not, not the, not, not the fullest unboxing experience, but I, I at least appreciate having some things in this <laughs> that complement the phone. The phone is more ready to be used immediately after opening the packaging. So let me, uh, let me kind of tuck this to the side. We'll do that, that plastic peel. Um, I'm trying not to bump this Ikea desk because it gets real wobbly. And as much as I love giving you all like seasick vibes and ooh, ah, I really like this, this color tone. It's got kind of a satiny finish. It's got that matte going on. The rear has that curve. The last Motorola I played with was the Ace and I couldn't find it before I set up this camera because I was going to have that out as like an example of like literally the last moto I'd played with, but that was on Republic Wireless. It was one of their, uh, you know, more expensive phones on Republic, but not one of the most expensive phones that Motorola makes. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people, especially like on my Discord that are gonna like that this is a Moto Edge with a flat screen. <laughs> not living up to the Moto Edge branding, but getting back to a flat display on a phone, um, let's see, can I get a little closer, a little tighter? Yep, we got that triple camera array. So that's looking pretty sharp. I mean, I think it's, this is gonna be interesting to see if this two megapixel camera um, really contributes to things like autofocus performance or low light or video or anything like that. Um, so that, that should be kind of interesting to play with. I like this take on a camera module. Just in, in I mean, again, it's, I'm trying to avoid the, you know, it feels really nice in the hand. It feels like they designed it so that someone with an opposable thumb could like hold on to it comfortably. So that's, that's pretty great. I mean, I can spend at least a whole minute on a review with some fancy B-roll of it, like panning across my desk, just because it feels, it feels really good. It feels, it feels pretty nice. Um, <laughs> Simon says, Hypno, the Moto Flat just doesn't have the same ring to it. No, this is an edge. It's an edge plus. And it still has a curve to the back. And then it has a sharper edge thanks to the flat screen. Ha <laughs> ha, see, we did their marketing and branding for them. So yeah, this is looking really clean. There's no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There's no headphone dongle or earbuds in the box, but um, we do get the charger and the cable. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fire this up. Uh, power button's a little high. The volume rocker is really high up there. Like that's that that's actually a little stretch for my Hobbit hands right there. That's like I gotta reach for it. Um, let's see. Okay, cool. So let me. Uh, I'm gonna click off of this screen here while I just get stuff caught up, and we can kind of look at some of the chat here. So yes, it does have wireless charging, and they included a wireless charger to go with it. And fat produce, yeah, it, it is. I mean, we're. It's interesting when we talk about like premium tier phones, um, like I can be critical of a Samsung even though I don't like curved displays. Hello, Ooh, hello Moto. Um, I can be critical because one of the things that we're looking at on curved displays is knowing that bending the OLED is a more expensive manufacturing process. So if we go, you know, if we lose curved display and we keep phones at similar prices, we know the company manufacturing the phone is saving cash by not going with a curved display. Like the manufacturing process is less expensive for them. So even though I don't like curved displays, that's still one thing that we can point to to say like, yeah, but you're kind of making this a little less expensive. So um, let me see. Phone activation, you need a SIM card for this to work, but I'm just gonna set it up on the Wi-Fi. And next, and let me put in my super secret Wi-Fi password. One, two, 
three, four, five. It's also the same code I keep on my luggage. <laughs> Charles Monroe. Again, that's a that's a, a refreshing way to look at it. The edge is bleeding edge technology, not the edge on the screen. Totally works. So I mean again, I feel like we're doing the Motorola marketing job for them. I feel like we're being the best tech neighbors that we can be. <laughs> All right, so uh, we can, we've can we got the help improve Motorola, Motorola products, enhanced device support, smart updates, um, I'm, I guess accept and continue. Looking for updates. I'm basically holding off on here until I can get to putting in my other passwords. Mega, <laughs> DTNL, uh, how did you know my password is megapickle12345? <laughs> Same, same password as all of my coworkers. I, 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 we probably worth at some point. I should dig in and do another like best practices. Reach out to Snubs. Uh, reach out to Shannon and and say like, well, you know, again, we, we want to keep these things in in fresh in people's minds. But I feel like so many people, especially with work from home, are are having those corporate. You know, you've got to change your password every six weeks, and you're like, it just melts your brain. And I think that leads to bad habits. So you just have like a post-it note with all of your passwords just kind of written somewhere. And uh, any ways that we can do that um, to uh, to, to kind of like help people out, you know, password managers and things like that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm ripping off one of my favorite movies there. No, Simon. Come on, I know you're, you're, oh, whoops, that's not Simon's comment. This is Simon's comment. I, I know you're, you're playing the, uh, the TLC game, you know, Scrubs, but we want, we want them snubs. That sounds weird, and especially knowing that snubs is a woman who does really good work on security tech, that sounds a touch inappropriate. <laughs> Oh, Big John, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Uh, grab a cup of coffee, enjoy some tech, much appreciated. I will put that $10 towards the finest roast uh, from my local roasters. Uh, much appreciated, good sir. And uh, you know, I, 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 definitely, uh, I definitely thank you for, for the support. <laughs> Nick, come on, you don't. Please tell me you don't. Nick's like, leave my notepad password sheet alone. Yeah. Maybe maybe I do need to make fun of that just a little bit more. Okay, copy over apps and data. It, that took a while to, to get through just the syncing onto my Wi-Fi and, and getting that set up. So I'm going to say don't copy. I like to start fresh. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a tech reviewer, so my use is not indicative of average consumers. And now I can put in my account and password my super secret password here uh three whoops i can't do the joke while i type in this password because it's more complicated four five okay good and i'll do more like pretty oh yeah now i've got to do the verification and yes it's me and Ready for it versus Dex, go! <laughs> Are, is Motorola ready for a Dex showdown? That's the video I'm gonna shoot next week. That's already the terrible title that I'm thinking of for, for the video. It's because I can't live without really awful smartphone puns in my life. Okay, so we can go back. I can finally get into the fingerprint scanning. I believe this is just an optical fingerprint scanner. So let me go back into screen share. Oh, Aditya, is this going to be your primary only Juan's cam? You know it. All right. Um, yeah, that looks okay. Let me turn this down just a touch because it's a little bright. Let me know if that looks better because I can't see this on YouTube the way that y'all can. And, and absolutely, uh, I, I was just kind of riffing on security and stuff. But LastPass, Definitely a great fit. I need to maybe get out of using Firefox for everything. So I might need to mess around with that. 
and, and go to a, a proper paid uh, password manager. Okay, uh, unlock with fingerprint. Hold on, I'm gonna clean the screen because it's a bad habit that I have where I kind of do the fingerprint scan on an optical. My thumb's a little sweaty. You guys ever have like sweaty thumbs? Man, I'm like really anxious and excited about this. Maybe I'm over caffeinated. I think that's the problem. All right, set up. Find the sensor. Oh, it's on the power key. Oh, I'm so happy. That power key is the fingerprint sensor. This rocks. Oh, this, I, okay, yeah. Oh, I just got roll it up. For some reason, I thought this was an in-display. I was gonna be like, okay, it's fine. I mean, it's not gonna be as good as the IQ 9 Pro, but you know, you can handle up. No, this is way better. Oh, this is way better. Oh, Grounded Tech, is that an Apple Cloth competitor? Oh no, this is Circuit City. <laughs> I have microfiber cloths. I bought a whole bunch of gear years ago, and for some reason, I got like a dozen of these individually wrapped. I've been using them for years. I am not the kind of tech reviewer who can afford those Apple cloths. Um, I, I'm, I'm rocking OG Circuit City. Yeah. But Big John, completely agree. Yes, fingerprint scanner. Ah, in the power button. This is this is the best. This is objectively better to in-display fingerprint sensors. Okay, um, let, let's see how the actual scanning goes. I'm just gonna kind of touch and lift and, oh, I they, they've got a lot. You gotta scan a bunch of times. Um, finger placement should vary slightly. I'm trying to vary the fingerprint placement slightly. But if I do it too slightly, then, then the phone yells at me and it makes me sad. See, oh, oh, oh. oh I'm not, oh, it's not doing it. I mean, like my thumbs aren't that big, so I don't have mu like a ton of additional room. All right, now that you've added a fingerprint, you can unlock your phone by touching the fingerprint sensor. Touch to unlock when the screen is off. Yeah, that's that's good. Cool. Um, I would like to add another, and let's see if if this works off my. It's really high up though, so that's not where like a thumb is gonna rest. And so even, even with my index finger being sort of like at the top of the phone, that's, that's gonna take a little muscle memory to remember where that is. I'm like, I'm reaching high enough that it feels like the volume up on most other phones volume rockers. That's not bad, but I'm not, it, it's not gonna be like Xiaomi where I just take it for granted. Oh, come on, I am varying. I'm, I'm doing what you're telling me to do. Stop yelling at me. I, I guess that worked. Um, no, I don't want to add another now. That took, that took a while. Uh, let's continue the setup. I'm very excited about this. Uh, Google Assistant, I agree. I, I agree with Google Assistant. Um, I also agree with unlocking my phone with Google Assistant. That is something I agree to. Come on, come on, show me, show me the setup, show me the setup. <laughs> um, I'll skip this for now, because that's a whole other thing. A change wallpaper, let's see what wallpapers there are. Live wallpapers, no live wallpaper. <laughs> Got my hopes up there, Moto. I mean, Moto keeps things simple, so let's see. Um, I don't like busy, oh yeah, these are kind of just like, the the app the the normal android um wallpapers that we've been playing with for a while i'm just gonna leave it like this because i like abstract shapes that aren't clearly defined so they don't compete with my visual acuity for uh apps and shortcuts uh let's see what the font size is i'm gonna say small go back uh, i'm not gonna worry about my other accounts review the additional apps yeah those all look fine and yeah, I guess we're done for now. Getting our phone ready, this might take several minutes. Oh, and hey, Slick Deals is in the chat. What's up, Slick Deals? Shaking my head, LOL. I'm happy to announce that hopefully soon, my first uh, hosted video at Slick Deals will be going live. They're a, they're a new partner that I'm working with. So uh, especially for those of you who are 
you know, hardcore deal hunters and you're looking to get the best bang for buck out of your tech purchases. And not just me, I'm also excited to announce that my sister from another mister, Trisha Hirschberger, is also joining the Slick Deals team. I think her first video is already out. Um, so it, it, it's like a little happy new egg reunion where I haven't been able to do any uh, legit projects under the same umbrella with Trisha for a while. So I'm, I'm super stoked. This is gonna be good time. So, hey, Slick Deals, thanks, thanks for jumping in, man. Oh, oh, here's the big tease. Slick Deals, they're uploading a video. And apparently, I, I mean, I would imagine in response to what I just said, my first video on Slick Deals might be going live soon. Hmm. -hmm. And Art Dog, uh, Art Dog writes, I really don't like the side fingerprint sensor, although I know most do. So a part of the production, a, a part of the performance art for one of my videos is I tell you what I really like, and I'm not trying to review for people I don't know. So the thing is, I genuinely prefer a, a hardware tactile landmark for a biometric security uh, solution. So right now, I think um, Xiaomi probably has the strongest uh, strongest game for fingerprint uh, uh, fingerprint sensors and power buttons. But I love my Duo 2, and I love uh, Sony uh, for, for doing the same thing. I'm really happy to see Motorola. Again, because part of the Motorola pitch is business-grade data security. That's always been a part of the Motorola DNA. So um, I'm happy to see this here. It's never to really try and make people feel bad. It's just that I kind of like to poop talk <laughs> people with their opinions because I'm allowed to have opinions too. Here, I'm gonna kick this off while, as soon as I, I get out of my screen share there, I'll see the, uh, it's, the phone's still getting ready. So it's, it's still doing the thing. But um, let's see, 2 a Tech visits Slick Deals several times a day. Uh, Simon used to use Slick Deals all the time. Aditya, cool. Big John Tech. Yeah, see, Aditya, I'm super stoked. Um, Trisha is easily one of the savviest, one of the best hosts I've ever worked with. Um, TK is, is, my, is one of my absolute best friends. Trisha is ab one of my absolute best friends. And you just sort of learn to, you grow to trust people when they have good instincts and you know you can kind of carry these conversations. And uh, I, I just can't say enough nice things about Trisha Hershberger. She's kind of amazing. Um, let me go through this. Aw, thanks, David. Dave Ferns is throwing me uh, a, little, um, a little congratulations there. Uh, oh, Swolo just jumped, uh, joined the cat. Swolo like Solo. He's swole. That's, that's, that's kind of his thing. Um, <laughs> grounded tech, you're a slick Juan. Get it? Because it kind of sounds like Juan. I also would have accepted Obi Juan um, with the uh, solo mention. <laughs> Big John. Yeah, I'm kind of an enabler like that. Okay, Juan, got to go off to Best Buy, find some tech stuff. Great stream. See you soon, my friend. Have a good one, buddy. And Rory, what is up? Thank you so much for the super chat. How's it going, Juan? Long time no see. It has been a quick minute. I recognize your name in these chats. It's nice to see it again there. Thank you so much. Um, Trey916, I uh, just popped in a, a flat screen question mark. Yes, we are flat screen on the Moto Edge. And I know so many people that are going to enjoy, um, enjoy that design choice. Um, let me get that out of the way. Let me get that back there. Okay, so um, I, it seems it, like the screen actually just turned itself off because I think we're through the initial setup. Um, let's, let's just kind of take a little a perusal. Let's like take a look around. What's what's going on uh, on uh, on the the phone, the software? I'm imagining it's gonna be pretty simple. I I, I feel like this is gonna be about as as close to stock Android 12 material you design. Probably very similar to what we saw on the Xperia updates. So let's uh, let's kick back over and just kind of kind of poke around. Uh, I'll try not to be too obnoxious with, like, hiding the phone. Oh, that felt good. Oh, that felt real good. Sorry, it's still on the Verizon. Oh, that's real That's real quick. Oh, that's fast. Yeah, ooh, that, that, that makes me happy. 
So I'm going to go ahead and say no. <laughs> I currently don't have a Verizon account. So I don't think Verizon services really needs to, to keep tabs on what I'm doing. Again, digital secure. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and skip this. And let's stay in touch. Um, uh, no, I don't give Motorola permission to send push notifications about services and benefits. And ready to go. All right. And here we go. And it's real nice and pretty. This is just that first setup. It's like a little do more with Moto. That's kind, of, that's kind of handy, having just like a little tutorial guy, you can jump right in. Some of your phone's best features are waiting for you in Moto app, personalize your device and helpful tips, explore gestures and more. I like seeing some of these hands-on, not too intrusive, but um, just a little, a little helpful hand where someone might not be as familiar with Motorola phones. So let's see, let's, let's go to Moto. Let's, let's see what they've got, got for us here. And let's see what's going on. <clears throat> See, grounded tech, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling this. Until, until fingerprint sensors in the display can all be as large as the iQoo, you know, that really super, super large iQoo uh, ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, I'd much rather just go power button. In fact, even on the iPhone, give, give me two-factor biometric authentication with face, uh, face ID and with touch ID. Um, so that's the tricky thing about Verizon. Aditya is saying, if it's unlocked, why do you have a Verizon app? This phone is officially being sold uh, on, uh, on Verizon's network in the United States. And I don't believe it's locked, but I don't think I've got full support. So like I am gonna pop my personal SIM card in here, but that's on Mint. Right now I'm, I'm, I'm slumming it on an MVNO and I think I'm gonna be reduced to LTE so I don't, it, it's, it's the, it's the legalese. I'm not locked to Verizon, but I also don't get <clears throat> full 5G support for all carriers in the United States. <laughs> do you want, oh, do we want to see? Hold on. Someone just said, uh, can we do the, can we do the, how many unlocks you can do in 10 seconds test on this bad boy? So, so far Xiaomi phones were, were the fastest. Uh, we're, we're in the Moto app right now. You know, let me save that. We'll just take a quick look around. And then we can do a power button, um, uh, a power button uh, fingerprint sensor test. So see what Moto can do. We can personalize. We've got layout. We've got fonts, uh, gestures, quick capture, power touch, uh, tips and tricks. So let, let me start with. Well, I want to see if there's anything different on personalize, layout, fonts, colors, icon shape. Uh, sounds, display size, font size. What, uh, what about icon? Yeah, I kind of like rounded squares. What's the official vote? What should I do? Should I do circles? Should I do teardrops? Should I do hard squares? Should I do weird amorphous blobs? Uh, what, 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 what is the, the, the hip kid solution for good icon shapes right now? I, I'm, I'm old and cranky, so I, I can remember back like when Windows Mobile tried to do hexagonal tiles for, for app icons, what do we think? So TNA says drops, Trey saying circles, Grounded Tech saying hexagons, uh, Zymash is saying the, the squircle, rounded squares. I'm kind of leaning on just sticking with grounded squares. Uh, pentagrams. <laughs> Rocky, <laughs> I know, weird amorphous blobs. Um, yeah, okay, maybe I'll just leave that leave that as squares. Oh, it, I don't have gestures on, so I have to actually tap back buttons and stuff. Wallpapers. It doesn't seem to have anything in here. Oh, system theme, I definitely wanna to go to dark. I, I'm not a fan of transitions. Does anyone use the transition uh, dark theme and light theme? Um, I, I, I've never enjoyed, you know, letting the phone decide when to change the look of my phone. Um, let's see the layout, four by five. I actually kind of want to go five by six. I like having a denser arrangement of icons on the home screen and then colors. Well, let's see, the back of this is, is kind of got some aqua tones and some blue tones. So let me, ooh, I kind of like that. I think that'll go, that'll go well. 
So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna switch up the 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 general theme color to something a bit more aqua. Oh, there's the check mark. Okay. Did it really do it? Hold on. Now ah, oh, now I've gotta see again colors. Yeah, it, okay, they did it. Good. And now let's see gestures. Um, quick capture. Twist your wrist twice quickly to open the camera anytime. Um, double tap on the power key for quick shortcuts. Fast flashlight. Uh, chopping motions. Good. I'm so happy. This is like such a trip down memory lane. I, I flip and love this. Again, like I haven't played much with Moto's uh, um, since uh, Moto mods and, and, and like the Moto G series. Excuse me. So these, these little like ergonomic gesture, you know, just waggle your phone around and get it to do stuff. I'm so happy to, um, uh, to get to play with these again. Uh, I do like flip for do not disturb. Ooh, pick up the phone to silence the ringer. That's just, that's just handy. Let's try it out. Oh, we're gonna do, we're gonna do it. We're testing it live. All right, ready? Let's turn it on and try it out. It's not making any noise. I guess I'll pick it up. Okay, so I guess that kind of worked. <laughs> it doesn't make any noise. All right, I want to try it again. I want to try it again. I want I want make the noise. Make the noise. No, no, no noise, but I can pick it up and, and there it silence. Okay, yeah, I'll leave it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> um, uh, pick up the silence. Swipe to quit. See apps in split screen. Oh, swipe to split. Uh, see apps in split screen by swiping back and forth. Let's do that. Okay, let's let's try it out. We're going to try it out. Maybe it, This doesn't have to have any noise on it, so it's okay. Well, the alerts are working. That's great. And and now we can multitask like a champ. Oh, I can't actually do anything with it. Oh, I guess not. Okay. Yeah, turn it on. Um, uh, to have full control over your device. Allow. Uh, okay. Now, can I swipe to split on this? App does not support split screen. <laughs> All right. Nice, <laughs> fair, fair Motorola, fair. I am asking a lot. Um, I don't like doing lift to unlock because it just gets too twitchy. Um, what kind of power button shortcuts can we, oh, actual like a shortcut menu. Okay, so let's do that. Let's try it out. And now we're gonna double tap. It tried to fire up the Google Assistant. I, I mean, I guess that's fine. I guess I want to play with, oh, let me turn it off and let me try it out. No, it's it's just Google Assistant. All right, um, I'm gonna leave that alone for now because I, I don't know how that works. Okay, um, what I desperately need to do though is go into settings. Yeah, this is totally n normal stock Android 12. Um, let me find gestures. Oh, stylus. I wonder what pen this uses. I'm so stoked to have yet another stylus enabled device. Um, let me just search gestures. My brain is so melted from every other phone that I need to review. And system gestures. And navigation and gesture navigation. Ah, oh, that's better. All right, let me get rid of that. Okay, so we've got stylus here. I didn't know that this had active pen stylus support. <laughs> Activate your stylus. Insert the stylus into the pocket on the back of the case. Well, I guess that's gonna be their proprietary Moto pen. Uh... <laughs> so, ooh, ooh, Moto notes uh, just just stopped and crashed. So hold on, I just want to see. Can... Okay, so their specific stylus implementation looks like it's going to be proprietary and Bluetooth to a pen that I don't even think they're selling yet. But um, let's see, stylus action, stylus writing, write directly into text boxes, turn Bluetooth on automatically. Uh, when device is locked, open Moto Note. 
Uh, let's see, removal reminder. So again, the case is going to try and emulate um, Galaxy Note features. So it sounds like this is going to be a little bit more in depth than, uh, than what the V60 was doing. But I wonder what kind of active pen tech it uses. Because if I can use one of my Wacom stylus, styly pens, what if I can use one of my Wacom pens, <laughs> um, that would be really cool. So uh, let's see, smart app tray, easily find. I, I don't like smart app trays. Um, enhance results by allowing branch to access and analyze. I wonder if I just turn these off. Like I just want an alphabetical list because I'm old. I, I, I can't cotton to all this fancy newfangled tech. Um, but yeah, okay, so first of all, hey, this is a Motorola. Um, even with it being a Verizon phone, like let's see, all the Verizon apps, just call cloud, digital secure, no other multimedia or entertainment apps. Got Message Plus, but obviously I'm gonna use the regular Google Messages app. The Moto apps, we got the recorder. Um, Moto Note, so so you can take notes. Uh, this is really clean. Um, e even in something like this, uh, the only add-on is Amazon Shopping. Um, so that's, that's pretty nice. I am not having to go through and disable a whole bunch of stuff. Obviously the Verizon services are gonna go. Um, because I'm not on Verizon, but that's, that's really simple again. So I don't know. I mean, is that, is that something that you talk about if you're talking about a review, um, you know, for average consumers, you know, someone picks up this Motorola, it's got a really pretty back. This makes a great first impression. It looks like a nice phone. You see it in the Verizon store. It's got nice lighting on it. You get it home and then you're like, um, oh no. There aren't enough apps. I expected there to be at least Facebook pre-installed on my phone. Is that is that a concern or is that something that we think people will find refreshing? Like, oh, this is nice. I don't have a whole bunch of garbage on my phone. I know for us, if you're watching a stream like mine, you're 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 you know, you're probably inclined to not enjoy value-added pre-installed software. <laughs> Uh, oh, Coast, I'm definitely going to be spending some time with this thing. I'm, I'm critically excited to be playing with the Moto. I will be going in deep just to kind of see what else is, is going on here. So, okay, I, this isn't the most exciting, you know, visual here, but I think I've got it over here. I've got my Wacom pen, but it doesn't have a battery in it. I just want to see if this is using the same kind of pen tech. And that would make me very happy if I didn't need to buy a proprietary pen just to get basic screen interactions. Like if I can just sign documents off of this thing. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm probably going to end up buying um, whatever pen and case that they've got for this. But here's, here's the moment of truth. This is the Wacom. I don't think I've got... That's not doing anything... That's not changing anything. So it's not using the same kind of Windows pen tech that a lot of uh, a lot of PCs were using. It's not the same as the Moto. That also means I'm probably not going to see anything work with uh, my S Surface stylus. So yeah, that doesn't work. I was kind of hoping one of these would be able to pull double duty. And I think I've got like an old, like crazy old. Huawei? Is that what it was? Ah! Knocking stuff over on my bookshelves. Probably stuff that shouldn't get knocked over like that. It'd be hilarious if like an old Huawei pen worked on this. I'm out of batteries. I really need to uh, get more of these crazy skinny, what are they, quadruple A's? You know, for the environment. I just want to see real quick. So I've got three different pens and none of them. So yeah, whatever whatever this is going to play with has got to be proprietary. It's got to be um, the Motorola pen. It's not going to work on something a bit more universal. I think I might have one of the old Lenovo Yoga pens. So uh, 
Maybe I'll, I, I can try and find that, but I don't know where that is right now. So, I'm putting away my styly, trying to keep my office clean, doop to do But in just setting up the phone, I think we've tanked about 10% of the battery. So this is that first day kind of use. Yeah, we're at 37%. I think I started at 46. Um, oh, it synced all of my contacts. That's great. I'm gonna have to install a whole bunch of software on this. And yeah. Let me um let me kind of just pop up the uh, the Moto wireless charger and you can kind of let it trickle charge up that way. <laughs> I just punched my table. <laughs> oh, Goat V8. I should try the Apple Pencil just to be sure. I think if if there's any stylus we can be sure about not working on this phone uh apple pencil would be high on that list um let me see oh this is also taped shut here too so this is going to be terrible unboxing you guys know i don't really do a lot of unboxing videos do you guys know that uh santiago uh, santiago i've been looking are there any rechargeable quadruple a batteries i have not found any if anyone knows of a way for me to recharge uh quadruple a cells I would really appreciate it uh, because I don't like having those. I mean, they last for a really long time because it's just a passive pen. It's not like even those those Wacom pens, they don't have Bluetooth or anything, but it does kind of hurt my soul every time I got to pop one of those cells out. So here, here's something that I do want to highlight. This isn't the craziest, fastest wireless charger. What is this, 15 watt? Yeah. So we've got a 15 watt <laughs> turbo power. Um, but as opposed to some of the recent chargers that I've played with from other companies, like uh, like say a OnePlus wireless charger, I do like that it comes with its own little brick in the box. So a uh, Qi wireless charger, let's see what kind of cable length we get. Because again, it's, it's wireless except for all of the things that you need to plug. Oh, so this is okay. This isn't bad, um, but I can, I can set this up here while we're, while we're chatting was hoping this would be a little bit longer. I'm telling you, so I, I don't know if folks are familiar um, with Nomad. Uh, drop a drop an exclamation point in the chat if you've heard of Nomad accessories. Um, I, I It's so silly, but it's so simple. I got their three meter USB braided cable and just having a longer USB-C cable uh, near my bedside table has kind of changed my life. I flip and love not not being so tethered, so close for those time those few times that I need to charge and use my phone at the same time. All right, so let me. I gotta walk around my desk, but I'm totally wireless, which is what's so fun about this setup. And I can pull this cable in through here. I'm doing it live. So far, I haven't had any massive catastrophes. This is fun, guys. And ah. Plug this in. Oh, that's kind of nice. Okay, uh, this, this is such a small thing, but I just reviewed a pair of earbuds. I wonder if I still have them on my table here. So these are the EarFun, and they use a USB-C charging, uh, charging port. You know, we would expect them to. But the little cutout trench around the USB-C port is so narrow, most USB-C cables don't fit in this charge port. So here we've got this really long kind of uh, shield to kind of hide, but that's a fair amount of shielding to be able to plug that in and there's clearance. So there's extra room around that so that you can, if you need to, you could probably use an even thicker gauge cable just to kind of keep things looking nice. So that that's, it, it, again, that is so silly, you know, <laughs> to talk about, but that's a nice design consideration. All right, let's pop that on there. 37%, it's gonna charge up for a bit. And I'm gonna come out of screen share. Let me get this out of the way. And we can come back in here. All Greg is jumping in for a couple minutes. Thanks for visiting, thanks for dropping by. William Richardson, uh, Rari Bollocks, I'm out of the loop. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid sounds, yeah, there's, there's a bit of that. 
Um, let me take another, another sip of coffee here. So I, I can't do like a full on product demo and deep dive, but uh, who maybe wants to check out a little uh, ready for action? I mean, try and get at least some kind of screen share. Like if I disable my B camera, I can feed the HDMI to my input and we can at least see if that's working. I just gotta fire up a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. Ah, oh, TK Bay, so much love on the stream today. I mean, this this is great. I'm, uh, I, I am silly giddy. I, I get to play with a lot of tech toys. I get to unbox a lot of things, but the way that this one all came together and from the team of people that I've been able to work with um, at Qualcomm, uh, th this one is, is, is just like that little bit extra fun. So I'm, uh, again, I'm very appreciative for people who are dropping by. All right, smash that like button. Thanks, Aditya. That's really cool of you. All right, uh, just throwing all this stuff off of my desk. Um, I probably shouldn't go next, Doc. Let me get a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, and I'll pair them up with the Moto. So I've got my folding keyboard, and I've got my Microsoft mouse, and I'm gonna need an HDMI adapter of some kind. This gadget lab is super messy. I have to go over here again. Okay, so I'm walking all the way around my office. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to this non-hosted stream with no one on camera. And in this bag of junk, I have an HDMI adapter. Let me ask so while I'm over here, let me get my, see if I've got my laptop hub just in case. And we can take a look at ready for, but I gotta pair this stuff first. I, I live in a mad scientist, Best Buy explosion of an office. <laughs> uh, so Eric Drummond asks, hey Juan, excuse me. Uh, hey Juan, how you doing bro? I have a quick question. Do you think Motorola is ready for, is going to be good competition for something like Samsung DeX? Here's the deal. Um, I am a zealot for competition. One of the things I care about most is the competition. So I might not be always the most reliable narrator because what gets me excited is seeing how different products compare and contrast. DeX is very accessible, uh, especially here in the United States. A, a significant number of people who own more expensive Android phones are probably on, I mean, own more expensive Android phones are probably on Galaxy phones. And uh, even if it's like feature for feature, there, there's probably just an established mind share of DeX, a familiarity for DeX that's gonna be way more accessible. Um, for me, I am willing to suffer a generation or two behind experience. Um, you know, I mean, I was an LG fan, so we can definitely can confirm Juan's okay with you know a generation behind on software. Um, anything that gets us some competition, that we can put some pressure on Samsung to continue polishing and iterating on DeX is going to be a good thing. We want that. And we wanna see those critical successes where another com company can offer a solution. The, the problem is gonna be one of consumer mindshare. So Motorola can put all the cool stuff in these phones that they want, but if we're not honestly talking about those features and how they're different than Samsung, not inferior, just different, then we miss out on the really fun stuff. Like we don't really get um, phones that get better. We get phones that kind of stay the same and then start losing features for the same price. It was a really rambling way to answer your question. <laughs> we're going to take a look at it right now and I'm going to we went from 36% to 39% in the time that I had it on the wireless charger and the phone staying cool I, I, I might actually charge this wirelessly I don't use wireless charging a lot so I need Bluetooth and we're going to go to network and internet no there it is connected devices and pair new device Not that phone. There's a lot of Bluetooth on in the office right now. Um, come on. Blue light flashing. 
and find the blue light flashing. We're doing it live. It found my living room TV. <laughs> Come on, I really need you to find this mouse. Microsoft Sculpt Com Comfort Mouse. All right, good. Pair with the mouse, yes. Excellent. Okay, so the mouse is now connected. I got a little mouse cursor on there. Now we're going to pair my folding keyboard. <laughs> and I have to type in a security code on this. All right, so that's flashing. That this they found the keyboard right away. So Motorola they 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 they're all about keyboards. All right, let me put in the code. Or two. Enter. Okay, that they both appear to be paired now. So now I got to do the scary juggling of disconnecting an HDMI cable from my camera and putting this into my HDMI adapter. I can turn this camera off, let it cool down a bit. All right, careful. Careful, don't fall on my desk. And pop this in here. And let's see. Ooh, turbo power connected. The turbo power charger gives you hours of power in just minutes. Since it charges fast, your phone may feel warmer when it's plugged in. Cool, got it. Oh, I love it. All right, let me, let me see if this will switch. Doing it live, doing it live, doing it live. And it's upside down. Okay, hold on. And transform, rotate, whew, okay. That works. Welcome to mobile desktop. Now you can connect your device to a display or compatible TV for big screen gaming, entertainment, video chats, or an engaging desktop experience. I am already so silly excited. This is something that TK and I were talking about um, we were talking about last night on the podcast, DeX has not continued to evolve where I might only want a simple screen share. Maybe it's a video or it's a game, like a gaming experience. And I plug in my phone and I don't need a full desktop. And this is something I was talking, I was speaking to Michelle and David Ruddock on the Esper podcast. Like there, it's so silly to me that we don't have gaming phones that have console mode when you plug them into a TV. So now, um, let me see if I've got my mouse cursor here and I can click next. How to get around. Use the buttons in the bottom left taskbar to access apps, search the home screen and recently used apps. Quick settings and notifications. This is looking a little bit more like EMUI desktop. Uh, desktop settings, so our control bar at the bottom is already more functional than screen plus. Experience Hub, see this. Okay, I need to hold on this for just a second. Ready4 makes it easy to find your favorite content. Go to the Experience Hub to easily switch between TV, game, video chat, and mobile desktop. Dex needs this so bad. If we're really gonna pretend that this can be an average consumer kind of experience, if I wanna play a game, look at that. I've got a game controller and I can just go and click the game controller button and I can go and play my games. This makes me so happy to see. This is the conveyance. You know, we talk about how the software will tell you what it's trying to do, that this is huge right here. So simple, it doesn't need to be flashy or complicated or super feature dense here. All it needs to do is tell me what my options are with big buttons that I can click on. That makes me crazy happy. Audio routing, that's nice. Especially if you have a next dock because the speakers on a next dock are pretty mediocre. Uh, using a controller, you can connect a game controller or remote control to your phone for a better gaming and video experience and done. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, Experience Hub. Oh, I love it. Guys, I'm tearing up. It's a proper desktop mode. It's legit. Oh, 
it's a computer and it's acting like a computer. Oh, this is so, this is so good. All right. Um, let me just get back into mobile desktop. And I just kind of want to look around. Big, big icons and buttons. Right click. Look at that. Right click, click is giving me menus. Uh, let me see if I can do the desktop settings. So I'd like to make this a little smaller. Um, display and font size. Yeah, we can definitely go a little smaller. Sorry, I'm doing this through my live streaming software, through a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. So um, this is definitely, uh, like I've got a little lag, so I'm moving slower than I would be if I were just using this. Oh, that's better. Okay, that's way better. Um, and I just tried to use my mouse on my streaming setup. All right, I just have to make this window a little bit bigger. Oh, snap features, just like Dex. We've got minimize and maximize. We've got minimize to tray. We can close stuff out. Oh, this is so good. Mode and resolution. What's the resolution? Can, can I go up to 1080? Oh, look at that. So this is another thing that bugs the, the P out of me on Dex is how you have to jump through specific accessories to get higher resolution. Now I'm only on a 1080p capture card here. So let me just bump this up to 1080p and we can see this full resolution. Or did it do it? Or was I already on 1080p? I said I was on 720. But I'm gonna have to like really play. I mean, this will go up to 4096 by 2160. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. I love that it's just there. Oh, that's so good. Oh man, I am I'm getting real I'm getting I'm getting real Twitter pated about this. Th this is what I've been wanting for so long. Um, I'm not gonna worry about app launch preferences and stuff. The little mouse icons change over. I, I do hope I can find a way to maybe minimize some of the desktop shortcuts that you just make them look a little smaller. Um, let's see, recently used apps, screen lock. Okay, so again, this is a great feature. Dex did this first, but on Dex, you have to go into your app drawer first and then you can lock your phone. I love that this is just right here on the taskbar. Something happens, like say you're sitting at a cafe and someone yanks your laptop dock, you know, your ability to try and like close out of something or lock your phone directly, that's really handy. We can screenshot directly. That's a, that's a kind of a Dex like feature, desktop settings. So, okay, the settings that we were just looking at immediately accessible right down here. Um, where are, oh, I should probably check. Just make sure I don't have anything too silly or sensitive. Um, an email from my wife, my wife. And I just wanna see if I can get to notifications, battery charging. Oh, that takes me directly to my calendar. Let's close that before my calendar populates. Is this also gonna be, yeah, that's the same, same button. I just clicked the same button guys. Oh, and then the little bell icon, there we go. Oh, that's real pretty too. Oh, that's real clean. God, this, folks, this is so good. All right, let's see the app drawer. And it's kind of tablet-y, but that's okay. I do like that it's a vertical scroll, so I like this better than Dex. That's good. And then everything's right here. I want to try and... I'm not going to go too deep into reviewing this, but literally because it's here right now, I need to see... Um, how Office plays. Because Office has just recently added better support for different types of, um, no, where's the search bar? Come on, search. Oh, there we go. So Office has added much better support. Uh, it doesn't work as consistently across different phones as I'd like it to, but um, what, what Office is doing now is when the V60 was out and you did dual display, you could have a document and a spreadsheet or a PowerPoint presentation and a document. You could have one of each file type open. But now we're getting much better support for 
multiple documents of the same type. So if you have three Word documents, you can pull all of those up in separate individual windows, um, but it doesn't work consistently. So like it doesn't work on the V60. Um, even though the app isn't really any different, you would think, oh, this would be perfect. Unfortunately, the way that it partitions and the way that it opens multiple documents, um, it replaces on one screen. So it works great on a duo. It works really good on the fold if you do the folds gestures for, um, uh, for multitasking. I think that's kind of annoying when the duo works immediately the, the way that it's supposed to. But I was uh, using Dex and Dex just organizes it in, in like a series of tabs in your, in, your, uh, in your bar at the bottom. So give me one second here because I've got to log into my Microsoft account and I don't want to have to do that on camera. So office, office reimagined. Yeah, the dual screen cases were the best. I mean, they really, really were good. Um, I, I still have my velvet, like it's on the bookshelf right behind me. And, and I, I point to that because there are so few phones that have desktop modes and here's the velvet which is basically a Galaxy A71 competitor. And it's got stylus support. It's got a headphone jack, a really good headphone jack. It's got memory card support. Um, it's got a desktop mode. It's like the most feature complete uh, uh, phone that's ever been made, especially for a mid-ranger. And autofill. Let's see if that worked. Nope, I still got to put in my password. Okay, hold on one second. Four, five. Nope, that is not my password for Microsoft. <laughs> ah, that was the one that got me. The haptics are light. It's, it's got like those teeny little pulses on the keyboard. Um, I prefer that over those big floppy fuzz, fuzz, fuzz but it's not gonna be, it doesn't feel like it's gonna be great for notifications. So, um, you know, if you like the real heavy, heavy handed buzz that alerts you to something when it's in your pocket, that doesn't seem to be what we're playing with here. Um, all right, so let me minimize that. I'm gonna go ahead and exit completely out of office and, and performance is pretty smooth. So ready for is not like the Android desktop mode. Every time I've used the Android desktop mode, there's been, um, Whenever the phone is, is displaying to two different sources, both slow down. So far, the smoothest I've used is the Sony Xperia. Um, the Xperia is using the Android desktop modes, maintain the, the projected display way smoother than anything else that I've used. Um, but when you use DeX, it doesn't seem to tank the phone screen performance and ready for, like I was just doing all of that in office on, on, on the phone, not through the desktop mode. Um, the phone was still just as responsive. So ready for feels like a better packaged custom version of a desktop mode. It doesn't seem like it's using the Android desktop mode backbone and then polishing it up. It's different than LG Screen Plus. Like I think Screen Plus was, um, uh, was uh, the you know a, a little bit more of the Android guts behind it. All right, so um, let's reopen Office, and now here's my Dex Rocks article, or not article, the video script. So that's open. I'm just gonna move this up here, and then oh, let's do my earfun script. Oh, did it open it up in the same side window? Yeah. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. This works better on DAX. So when you uh, when you open up the same type of document, it seems like it replaces it in the Microsoft Word window. Okay, so that's kind of a bummer. I was hoping that it would uh, would give us. So let me let me see if I can pull up my benchmarking spreadsheet. So yeah, that'll give us, that, that lets us do um, multiple, multiple windows if they're different document types. But it doesn't look like it's gonna give us multiple windows if it's the same document type. So I think Samsung's relationship with Microsoft 
has uh, has given them a little bit of an edge on <laughs> Microsoft document support. Get it? Because I'm reviewing the edge from Motorola. So I said edge. Wow, it's really taking its time on that um, on that document. I don't I don't need to sit here and, and, and wait for for that to happen. Let me just hit home and drop all those. But we have, you know, again, apps are going to that safe state down at the bottom dock. That's beautiful. That's exactly what we would want to see. Um, I'm gonna have to play around with different browsers because I don't love Chrome on desktop, mobile Chrome on desktop modes. Um, on Dex, I tend to use the Samsung browser and then on other phones, I'll, I'll switch over to Firefox. This is looking real good. I am very happy about this. So um, here, let me get back out of screen share and uh, we can kind of chat out some other, uh, some other questions here if anyone wants to ask. Edge is the best for Dex. <laughs> uh, love it. Um, oh, this is an interesting question. All right. Uh, so we can't make use of USB 3 ports for Elgato support for streaming games from the Moto Edge 30 Pro like high-end devices. I'm going to have to look at what the differences are because it sounds like there are a few... Um, between the North American variant and some of the other international regional variants and then what the, uh, the Edge 30 is trying to do, I'm, I'm going to need to sort of play around with that. Um, let's see. Uh, from Farhan, I never use Office app for Android, but Word for Android doesn't look any different than Word for Windows Phone, especially when using Continuum. I know you've, been, you've still been rocking Continuum on, uh, on your phones. I switched over to just the full Office uh, app just because I do use enough. Um, I'm very light on PowerPoint. I really don't use PowerPoint a lot, except for when I'm doing like bar graphs. Uh, but I use Excel a ton and I use Word for everything. Um, I write everything in Word. So it just kind of made sense. Like I might as well just staple them all together and install one app. You know, why install more app when one app just is good? Um, let's see, Gabaletta. My workaround is having the actual Word app installed and the Suite app installed. Oh, I didn't know that you could do that. I thought when you had Word installed separately and then you installed Office, it would just throw to the, the full Office app. I'll play with that. Because what, what I would do, because again, I would fire up Firefox, go into uh, Office 365 and then pull up documents and tabs. And that's how I would kind of get around. Because again, my, my needs for Word are just, I need to write out thoughts to get a script that I can say in front of the camera. So my needs aren't that intense. I'm not doing a, a lot of formatting um, in Word. Like I'm not trying to drop in images and tables and things. So I, I my needs are pretty basic. Um, especially compared to people that are really into their uh, office and productivity software. Yeah, I, th this to me is the number one, Dave. I would like more control over the desktop sizing and layout, but this is really good. It's very big tablet-y, so I need to see if it's gonna scale differently. I, like if I can plug it into my 4K display, I'm, I'm so excited if it'll just throw a 4K desktop with app icons that are one quarter the size of the, the, the icons that we just saw um, when I was screen sharing at 1080p. So good, so good, I'm so excited. This is so good. Um, <laughs> Billy Quizboy, Juan is the master of subtlety. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty good, you know, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me get this out of the way there. Great. So, um, very, very excited. I, I, I'm going to be cracking into this aggressively. Uh, yeah, I'm stoked. I'm going to start just kind of peeling the plastic on these earbuds because I've been really looking forward to playing with these earbuds too. Uh, yeah. So first video up. I've got a whole series of tweets that people shot me suggestions yesterday when we did the uh, the announcement, um, just who was going to be getting uh, which which of the Snapdragon insiders were going to be getting motos. Um, I, I, I was really excited to get to participate, not just like Juan's getting a phone. Don't get me wrong. 
that is very exciting. But it's way more exciting when I also get to say, oh, and we're also giving a phone to someone else. Like the give, the giving of the phone is is as fun or more fun than the receiving of the phone. So this is very fancy. I like this. This this like nice kind of hard uh, brown cardboard. Ooh, panels, panels that are appropriately like fitted to each other. That's really pretty. Snapdragon sound earbuds. And, and the um, and the Snapdragon earbuds case, you know, it's got a nice heft to it. It feels really nice in the hand. It feels nice in the hand. It doesn't feel like it's going to cut open an artery if you try to use it. So that's that's a very meaningful piece of review um, commentary. I'm, I'm very glad that it feels good in the hand. Oh, it does feel really nice, actually. <laughs> oh, Gabaletta, that's a good point. Because again, if this is not an Android desktop, so, so Gabaletta is saying, play with the minimum width in the dev uh, settings to see if that changes how much is displayed during the desktop mode, or if the phone recognizes the display and adjusts the display settings. Um, that'll be really interesting to see, because if it's an Android desktop mode backbone, it might behave differently when you mess with those developer settings. So I, I'm definitely gonna have to take a look at that too. But yeah, uh, really nice, pretty earbuds. Look at, they've got like shiny, look at that jewelry, like jewels for your ears and treat your ears uh, really, really well. Oh, they've got like the really wide kind of, uh, I forget what this is called, the part of your ear that forms the bowl outside of the ear canal. So this is a pretty broad. I'm gonna have to play with the tips, make sure I get a, a good fit on that. But these are, these are solid. Uh, th this case is, is pretty nice. Uh, yeah, I'm stoked. It's all, it, it, well, I mean, it's not all set up. I've got to install so many apps. <laughs> We're going to have to run some of my performance testing. I'm really anxious to see, because I know this Moto is going to be handling things differently than Samsung was, but Samsung was throttling apps. So something tells me this Moto is probably going to run a bit more aggressively uh, than, uh, than the Samsung or even the IQ, because the IQ had some really intense performance uh, tuning enabled so that should be that should be pretty tough uh, so let's see yes all greg you have to break out the uh the the huawei p20 desktop mode i i i think i just put it back away in my bookshelf but i have my view 20 my honor uh, like that desktop mode is still baller today <laughs> Let's see, some other questions here. Oh, Mitek, what's up? How you doing? Uh, JMX Warrior, unfortunately, no. Writing uh, Xiaomi 10T Pro support video output for desktop mode. I uh, wasn't sure, I wasn't what, sure what setting to look for in the dev options. Unfortunately, I don't believe any Xiaomi has ever included USB 3. So the USB-C port is just the connector. You can use that for Thunderbolt. You can use that for USB. Um, Xiaomi phones, even the Mi 11 Ultra, that only terminates in a USB 2 connection. So you can connect accessories. You can connect mass storage. You can connect a cabled keyboard and mouse. It does not support any kind of video out that I've been able to find. With the exception of the Pixel 6, um, the every other phone I've used that has USB 3 at least has screen mirroring. So you can at least get an image of what's on your phone screen up on another display. And then from there, you go into the developer settings and you can toggle a uh, forced desktop mode. And it'll give you that really uh, kind of mediocre backbone. It's not, it's not a polished service. It's just the bare framework of a desktop mode, but you can at least see it. Um, if your phone supports USB 3, you should be able to get that to throw to a TV or to a monitor, some other kind of uh, display. Um, and yeah, you know, a couple people saying they were pretty disappointed about that. Uh, let me get this out of the way here. Yeah, and MeTech, MeTech is saying that. Uh, Xiaomi's minor letdown, no video out, unfortunately. So I, I, I know, didn't someone on XDA show a, a process for 
wireless screen sharing. And I wonder if that would work on a Xiaomi. So if like you had Miracast, if you could connect Miracast and then force some kind of desktop mode, that might require some ADB commands, but that could work. I don't know. I've never had great success really using Miracast. And when you screen share over Google, or over a Chromecast, not great. It's not the best, lots of lag. I just did that video for reviews.org. So I was like, oh, well, yeah, obviously if you cast a video, that's really easy. You can share your screen, but even while I'm trying to type, it's like character, 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 character. And like, I know I, I'm a slow typer. I am not that slow <laughs> of a typer. The, the, to me, I, you know, like I'm, I'm connecting my desktop to an ethernet cable. If I really need the, the most performant um, connection, I go to a cable and for me, like trying to use ready for through a streaming setup with even just a minor touch of lag in the communication between what I was doing to what I could see in my uh, video, uh, in my streaming feed, even that was a little too laggy and twitchy for me. So I always like going directly to a cabled connection to a monitor. Like if you can just plug in a USB-C cable and you can get a little portable display and that all syncs up, I think that's way better than like, well, I can kind of go wireless and then I can send a phone screen to my other computer. By the time you get all that set up, I could just do the thing on my computer, right? There's so little advantage um, to, to using my phone like a computer on my computer. But again, wireless ready for is one of the major updates um, on this phone. So I should play with it and see if it's gotten any better. Yeah, grounded tech, exactly. Um, and Xperia is solid for game streaming with HS power control enabled. Don't think I could use any other phone for that purpose just because of that feature. And grounded tech, uh, TK and I talked about this last night. Um, PUBG for any future tournaments um, they're now, they're now uh, uh, making it more consistent. Sony Xperia phones are the official eSport phones for PUBG Mobile. So when they do competitions and when they do tournaments, they're gonna standardize on the, I think on the Xperia 5, but they might've also mentioned the Xperia 1. To me, the Xperia 5 makes more sense for that kind of a tournament. But again, you know that the phones are gonna run just a little cooler because you can do HS power control. You know, everyone's connected to kind of the same standard and you also have the ability to plug in a headphone, I mean, like a headset. So your audio, you don't have to worry about, you know, having dongles or Bluetooth or anything else. There's so much less interference. There's so much less crosstalk. You can even hook up ethernet through that whole cabled setup if you leave your USB-C port free and you use a, a 3.5 millimeter jack for your audio, it's real good. So you can you can dedicate that entire setup. Uh, standardizing on the Sony Xperia for gaming like that is brilliant. It's so good. Um, do, do, do. <laughs> Aditya has an Xperia 5. So his comment is, is self-referential and amusing to me. You're telling me my camera is a phone as well? <laughs> Grounded tech. Sony Xperia is something numbers and letters. Who can even say that phone name? Uh, Ted, how are the haptics? I did mention this, um, but they're they're light and precise. You know, now that ooh, plugged in directly over that cable, it, 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 uh, we're up to eighty two percent. That was a pretty quick charge. You know, like the super fast charging on, on a Samsung. All right, let me see if I can find haptic, vibration and haptic strength. Uh, now, this is just notification touch on. I don't have like a haptic feedback. Nope, so I can just turn haptic feedback on and off. Um, I don't see. Notification vibration? No, they're the same. It's just taking me back to the same menu over and over and over again. So there, there isn't, there doesn't seem to be any customization for how hard, um, how intense the the vibration comes in. But this is, this is pretty light. Let me just kind of put in some text. 
Yeah, it, it's it's not the strongest. It, it's um, it's a subtle, quick, contained pulse, and it's got a little bit of a flip, kind of a feel to it. It's not like the wood block on a OnePlus, or it feels like the phone's almost hollow, which I do like. I think that is a very unique feel for a phone. It's not got the same kind of lateral, like confirmation, like touch confirmation as like an iPhone. I would say that Samsung's probably a little stronger, um, but I like that this is subtle and precise rather than fuzz, fuzz, because I really hate on cheap phones. I mean, it's a powerful buzz, but it's so sloppy. I'd rather it be a little weaker and a little more precise. Um, oh, Gabaletta, that would be fun to test. Uh, I'm curious if the Microsoft Duo using Super Display app would only use one display and let you use the other freely or would it take up both stretched across? So that is a very good question and that would be very complicated on the Duo, but I think if you were to span super display across both displays and then plugged in, you would have pillar boxing, but that could work. Um, I, I think if you only did super display on one panel, then that panel, the other panel would just show up on your display mirror. Um, excuse me, I gotta test that. That's my hypothesis is like you would see one panel and super display would be half screen. I don't think super display would be able to take over the connected display and leave the phone screens alone. But the back, the, the baby first step of a desktop mode on the duo is trying to add a third display. So the Duo becomes a trio when you connect it to another monitor and you enable the desktop mode. It tries to continue the UI that you're using, but fill the full display. So it doesn't pillar box or letter box. It totally doesn't work, <laughs> but you can see where they're trying to go with it. Um... <laughs> He totally onomata peed the vibration motor. It's the only way I can describe it because you have different like you know, noises and sounds. It's hilarious. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're we're getting to to twelve thirty here. Um, I, I actually do. I should probably get back into really testing and reviewing and writing scripts and stuff like that. But uh, this was fun. Thank you so much for for joining. I know I don't do a lot of live streams on the on the YouTube's. This was co-streamed. If you also caught it on the Twitch. Um, so thank you everybody for, for, for jumping in. I'm going to have a lot more to say about ready for hopefully early next week, we can do the crowdsourced first impressions. Um, it's going to be your first impressions on the Moto Edge Plus 2022 with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, courtesy of Qualcomm, uh, the Snapdragon Insiders team and the Motorola team. Um, then shortly after that, so next week, I'm probably going to kick out two Moto videos because I got to do the first impressions with all of the questions that people asked. And then I have to dig in deeper on Ready 4. That that was just brilliant. Just getting to play with it. Like what I just did right there was awesome. I'm going to spend a little time with it, come back, finish out the full review, do some harder core camera testing, see if Motorola cameras have kind of caught up since the last premium phone I've used. And uh, yeah, I think we've got a whole schedule on just this one phone. And it's gonna be good. I'm very excited about this. So um, thank you. I, I got all these people saying, I can't wait for your full review and I need the details. And uh, Rye, Rye, Rye T likes my hat. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> LF Abrams used my, my first impressions. Was he pointing at me? It's like he's really talking to me. He writes how people talk. So, so thank you everybody for, for jumping in, for tuning in. As always, all the support for the, the, the folks who kicked over some super chats, greatly appreciate it. Obviously, YouTube has been a very difficult uh, uh, place, a very difficult platform to host community-driven kind of tech conversations. You know, uh, TK and I talk regularly about how we're trying to keep up with the traffic and the stats and the analytics, and it's been kind of garbage. You know, again, for us trying to host the, the sorts of conversations that I want to host. I put out a video on Dex. 
and I got a number of comments from people asking about the Android 12 desktop mode. And you're like, you know, you only saw this video because I said DeX. A week before, I put out a video on the Android 12 desktop mode and YouTube did not send it to you and you're subscribed to my channel. So if that's something you're interested in, YouTube is not serving up your interests. I have pretty good evidence on that over the last week. So I greatly appreciate not only just joining, coming to hang out, but for all of the content creators out there that are that are kind of trying to build these styles of conversations, supporting, sharing, uh, you know, really interacting, that kind of stuff really means a lot. Because right now we're fighting an algorithm. Um, you know, the platform isn't really serving content to people. It's acting like a gatekeeper in between us and our audiences. So outside of YouTube, if if you're ever so inclined, sharing, supporting, you know. Sending out content to other social networks, upvoting content on Reddit, that kind of stuff is huge because right now we're not really finding all the people that we think would really find this stuff interesting. So uh, on that note, I'm going to bounce out. TK stream uh, Saturday morning. Uh, make sure you catch his Saturday morning tech chat. That's going to be really fun. Uh, Jeff, if you're still in the chat um, or if you're streaming on Sunday, please let people know that you're streaming on Sunday. And then I'm going to be back at it on Monday for a pajama podcast where I'm probably going to have more to say about the moto, but just phones in general. Um, the uh, SGGQA podcast, uh, that'll be streaming Monday morning. And uh, it's going to be a totally casual show. So we end up just talking about, I don't know, like TV shows or something. Yeah, Jeff is saying he is streaming. He is streaming to, uh, on Sunday. So make sure you also catch the El Jefe Reviews show on, on Sunday. And then a whole week. Uh, you've got Gadget Goddess, you've got uh, Lou, you've got uh, Easy Computer Solutions. I think Scott Peachy is going to be streaming something. Then you've got Mike and Ike on Thursday. Uh, TK and I will be streaming on Thursday. Um, oh, who's on Friday? Oh, Holla at Your Boy, LaShawn, is on Fridays. I think I've missed some streams in there, but literally there's like a cable network of daily tech streams that's absolutely awesome. So I hope you're you're around because I'll be in the chat on most of these streams. So uh, take care, everybody. I hope you have a great Friday. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Keep up with all the fun, all the good tech chats. Do awesome with your technology. And I'll catch you back on another video, on another stream. Take care, be safe, be well. I love y'all. I'll catch you back.